Hi everyone, uh, my name is Greg. I wanted to start out with some basics for those of you who haven't done small angle x-ray scattering, maybe here for crystallography. Um, things I want you to know is that uh, SACS is a solution-based technique, and sort of the 30 microliter volumes make per mil concentrations. There are really no restrictions on buffer conditions, you know, aside from you know, melting the sample cell or something like that. Um, so not a lot of sample prep, and then um, on top of that, uh, it's high throughput, so can you collect a sample in a second? Um, and so the layout of the experiments is very similar to crystallography. You will have a um, sample presented from the X-ray beam, solution, collect X-rays through it, and collect uh, X-ray intensity as a function of scattering angle. Uh, and a typical profile shown there, area detector, but uh, the data is circularly symmetric. So you can just integrate along a line and then just use the additional angles, uh, circular angles to get you a uh, better signal and noise. Um, so because it's a solution technique, uh, SACs uh, are an, results are an average of all the confirmations and assemblies in solution. So if you can get purity, you're ultimately going to get better resolution in either confirmation or assembly. Uh, SASC provides about 40 unique pieces of information. Like you can think about them as constraints, and they're through a wide uh, scale in terms of uh, distances. So everything from characterizing your thousand, mind, you know, uh, angstrom particle down to domains that move five angstroms apart. So you know, sub nanometer resolution. And it's been particularly empowered by um, recent structural modeling, uh, you know, structural prediction, homology modeling, and computationally driven confirmational samples. And if you're looking for examples of its utilization, uh, you can go to our website, sibbles.als.lbl.gov, which I'm going to repeat over and over again during this talk as the primary resource, and you can see great examples. Uh, so just to give you an idea of the scattering, the um, uh, Using the conformational sampling, um, here you can see a protein undergoing conformational change uh, in silico up there, a PDB model. The SACS profile is calculated and compared against what was measured in solution. So you can pick out the conformation that was present in solution given this huge ensemble. And that's a very common use of, of small angle. So the two uh, techniques we run, one is size exclusion coupled SACs. Uh, and uh, to run size exclusion coupled for instructions, you go to stibbles.als.lbl.gov. Um, but uh, you will book one shift. You will be able to run with one running buffer. And if you can have seven samples in that running buffer, you can run that many in per shift. And the typical volumes is 60 microliters. And what happens is you give uh, the plate in from your epis, goes into a plate, sorry, the epis go into a plate. They get injected onto a size exclusion column. The flow through gets ported right in front of the x-ray beam. And small angle x-ray scattering is collected. And then you also get UV malls um, and refractive index there as well. So they get mass and things like that. So here's an example. Again, we collect areas. You can go by the intensity on that and get your typical elution peaks like you would get for UV. You can see this sample. There's a buffer region. There's two peaks here. Uh, if you uh, average the results uh, from this one peak, you get one scattering profile. This is, happens to be a heteromeric complex. So this is a monomeric version of, uh, in excess, one of the monomers uh, in excess. So that's that peak. You can get the scattering curve from that. And then also you get um, this uh, scattering curve from this, this peak. And if you zoom in on this peak, you can see that it's asymmetric and that the radius of duration is changing across that peak. And so uh, there are multiple species in here. And you can deconvolute uh, that um, uh, peak into the two species and get two SACS curves that describe two confirmations or two assemblies that are hidden under here. So with one injection, you get three samples, three SACS curves, and uh, can analyze them independently. Uh, we run high throughput SACS. And for that, we've coupled a liquid handling robot that picks samples from a 96-well plate that you prepare uh, at your lab. 
and it pulls samples from each well and pops it right in front of the X-ray beam. It gets collected and then gets popped back into the sample cell or into the uh, plates. And th the kind of things that gets done here is ligand screening, construct screening, condition screening. So here's, for example, a protein that undergoes a conformational change. Actually, it's a, a monomer to dimer transition upon NADH binding. So when you add NADH, it goes to a dimer. Um, this is a titration. And then what uh, this particular uh, experiment was doing was uh, doing point mutations of various amino acids and seeing whether you could uh, interfere with this transition based on the NADH. And, and some of them, um, you know, were monomeric uh, and some of them uh, were dimeric uh, without NADH. So you can see amino acids that are involved in that transition. Uh, so last slide here. Uh, this is how mail-in SEC SACS works. Uh, this is at sibles.als.lbo.gov. Um, we ask you to register twice, once for the rapid, um, which Andy will describe in, in a moment, and then uh, once for the Sybils beamline. Um, and you can do this thing for the uh, rapid proposal once per year, just as long as your scope hasn't changed too much and uh, should be able to uh, book slots within two weeks when the ALS is in operation. And that's, again, one of the benefits of having a, a remote data collection or mail-in data collection is that we can push through samples a lot. Uh, reminder that the ALS is typically down of January and February, July and August. And uh, we understand that there are many uh, logins that you have to deal with. Different, uh, the rapid proposal is a different login from the Sybil's proposal, et cetera. Um, and then there's also a, a one for results. And we're working through that. So we apologize for that inconvenience. But hopefully uh, that explains the uh, mail-in system. And thanks for your attention.